You're listening to Miscast Commentary. Hey everybody, welcome to Miscast Commentary. I am Joe Finley, conspicuous by his absence, Todd Tebow the Sailor Murray. He is away for a good reason, actually. Uh, he just had some minor surgery. Uh, if you saw our Twitter, we sent our best wishes to him. He is not obviously going to be able to make it for the recording for this one, so that is very unfortunate. If we're good, maybe we might actually get to hear from him a little later on. We'll have to see. So we did it. Three years, guys. And like we're still only tip of the iceberg for all the movies we possibly could do. It's been so exciting to get to do this for you guys and for us. Uh, we are having a blast doing it. We hope you guys are enjoying listening to it. And we just wanted to share with you some of our favorite moments from the year. Well, I'm going to share them with you. Todd, you know, sick day. Nah. But uh, we will share together and bask in some of the, you know, our funniest little moments and whatnot. So might as well just dive right into it. Let's go. His nostrils are so fucking distracting. He's a nostril actor. He is. It's an actual technique I saw it in uh, mm -hmm. Strasbourg. 16 uh, Candles takes yeah. place inside his nostrils. Exactly. He does have really wonky nostrils. Why did you say that? I'm sorry. All I see, I'm looking at Ali Sheedy, I see his nostrils. Maybe it's their lives 10 years later. No, but you get to see Judd Nelson's relationship with his parents and you know, all theirs and what happened. And did they get married and divorced yeah. and have a kid? Like, well, what happened? What I would want to see is kind of a twist. Like, you don't have to let's save this twist for oh the end or anything. Vampires. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Whose purse did you find the wagon wheel? Oh my God. I can't remember who it was. I still remember that. Oh my God. Well, I wouldn't want you to name her name anyway. I can't remember who it was, but I remember sitting in the back of class and looking in her purse and sticking out was a pad. Yeah. But I saw just like the top rim and it looked exactly like the packaging for a wagon wheel. Yeah. Like a wonderful marshmallow chocolatey treat. And I was like, I'm yeah. stealing that. Yeah. I'm a big fat guy. I am stealing that. <laughs> You know, they were, they don't even ask a question. Like, who stole me? I did. So, this tasted and like And I garbage. pulled it out, and I was like, oh, my God. And in back, and I was like, never again. I received high school. Okay, we're yeah. talking. I'm not going to say who it is. Mm -hmm. But I have received my first gay wedding invitation. All right, we did it. No, the wedding's not gay. The invitation was gay. <laughs> and, I mean, what an invitation. Wow. We're doing the breakfast club. Now, the good news about that is that kids will have been in school for almost two weeks at that point. And that works out pretty well, actually. Right? So, yeah. No, I know. Well, the, Did you plan that? Yes. But I know. I legit planned this one. Whatever. You winked at you, me. You winked at you me. You fucking liar. No, I sincerely did that because I was like, what can we do for September? I'm like, oh, it's school. No, I'm totally lying. I'm because you... the eyes of that. I just don't. I don't. I'm not feeling it. No, do you know why I'm lying? Because this was your <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's even better. I thought of it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you then forgot it. <laughs> I want to do a show like this. Just this do be a real thing. Can I, can I let you in on a little secret? <laughs> we do a show like this. Oh, neat. This is with microphones of... and everything. Yes. Oh well. I'm gonna take yeah, an. Really gonna... Can you take an I'm Alan gonna... Smithy credit on your kid? That like, would be amazing. I'm not happy with this. Uh, Alan mm -hmm. Smithy. That would be so <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Like... He's half black. Alan Smithy, this oh, baby. Shit. Right out the <laughs> Who's that? that <laughs> who's this guy? Who's this guy? Who's Where's the trivia? That's what? I already freaking told you. We yeah, didn't do the research Yeah, why don't you tell the people out there? I was like, you, I, was like I don't have the they trivia for this. I'm like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then you called me out like a fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I've been so busy and I felt so guilty that I didn't get the research. You should done for feel this one. even guiltier and then than you, made you me actually feel, feel. So much better when you were like, Don't worry about it, we'll just we'll just riff, we'll just go and then you and then... <laughs> throw you right under the plane wheels, bro. <laughs> Yo, Miss Cass commentary, what's going on, man? Crush here from two like decades. Congratulations on your third anniversary, dude. That is huge. Uh, welcome to the big time, and I look forward to challenging you again at Dueling Decades, bro. Take it easy, and see you. That was my dear friend Man Crush from over at Dueling Decades. Thank you guys so much for the shout-out. We really appreciate it. Uh, I've spent a lot of time over there lately. I was their champion for a little while, uh, spending a lot of time with those guys. Uh, great show over there, Dueling Decades. Make sure you go to check it out. So, yeah, continuing on, we have received criticism of being a little too quote unquote dude bro-ish from time to time. We have a tendency to regress a little bit when we're together. 
it's natural. High school buddies, you know how it goes. It's just locker room talk, guys. It's fine. Uh, but here's a pretty good example of some of the locker room talk that maybe we encountered during our recording sessions together. Take a listen. We had to have a stop motion skeleton sword fight. <laughs> As once they were discovered, they were like, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. and they took all their they took all their skin off. Yeah. And they were just big skeletons. All right. Now I don't want to take you too far out of the story, but when you said skeleton sword fight, I still had a feeling that you were just smacking dicks together. Well, that's what we call <laughs> sword fighting at sea. Yeah. <laughs> we call it the, the old st- skeleton sword fight. Yeah. Hey, old Mick, you want to go swashbuckle with me? <laughs> this is serious business. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Keep going. Why don't we run Hollywood? This is Fuck. bullshit. I know. I won't even jerk off into plants that often. <laughs> like, I won't even, you know what I mean? Like I will, but never in front of anybody. Yeah, I'm still you know? ashamed of myself. <laughs> but um... <laughs> Todd's hands are gay. Todd's hands this, are gay. My right gay. one is this kind of like a bye. Yeah. It's sort of, it likes... in, it's in transition. It's it's mostly it's mostly straight, but that pinky loves being inside yeah. an ass. And a man ass. Always a man ass. An animal man ass. Oh no. <laughs> this is this is that slippery slope Republicans <laughs> are always telling you exactly about. Exactly what the shit. Finger each other right now. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. Yeah. We'll be here when you get back. Don't you worry. We'll Finger be here. All right. The closest person to you. And speaking Don't of ask. which, Louis C.K. is in the news lately. Oh yeah, that's right. Nice segue. Nice to transition into that. Would you prefer well, to name your penis Rodimus Prime or Ultra Magnus? Well, definitely one of us is taking each, right? Ooh, that's right. Oh shit. Okay. Well, I'm gonna make my. Ultra Magnus sounds bigger, right? But Rodimus sounds Has like it, it right knows in there. what it's doing. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's, it's it got is it more right appropriate in there. Name, but it also just sounds like it's like it might not be the biggest and the baddest, but it, but you it, can it, use you, it. You know you can count on it to get the job done. <laughs> Let's find out if we can find a bot and then make a bot and then feed it miscast commentary and make it write a miscast commentary episode. Yes. And then we'll perform it. It's just going to go like dick, cock, boobs, balls. <laughs> and then dead silence for a while. And then and what then, will the robot do? The- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know I think what I'm that saying? they just live in a world where like species are now race mm. races because they've been so intertwined and stuff like that. Oh, so instead yeah. of like, oh, I'm only into Asian chicks, it's like, no, nah, I'm Could only into Could you humans, imagine or... like the porn you'd find? The categories must be just ridiculous. Oh my god! Like holy lord! Hut on Twilik backdoor action. Oh yeah, and oh, there's oh, like oh, who knows oh, what ah, the backdoor ah, is? Ah. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Like. <laughs> Got your dick swinging. That's the that's the uh, rest. My dick swing is like you know when you swing like a swing over the bar so many times yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just at the end and it's just that little yeah. It's kind of moving that's around. Me. It's moving. Yeah, yeah, it's moving. It's some something's happening. Yeah, hell yeah, it is. But, but definitely nobody's getting on it. <laughs> Charlie Cox, who plays <laughs> Daredevil. Uh, yeah, haha. Ha. Uh, t- <laughs> fuck. I used to be allergic to penicillin, so that would have been a very dangerous thing for me. You're not anymore, though. Apparently not. Really? Because I you went fixed yourself. Yeah. You're healing. I did it. No, I um, <clears throat> I I one time I went and got penicillin for a little thing in college, guys. No, I I was <laughs> I just had a throat infection, and they gave me penicillin. <laughs> Yay, my dick. But um, that's for the clap. Would you like if Thor showed up? Yeah. And you'd probably know. I'd that swallow them all. Like, if you probably <laughs> take that, Jane. <laughs> yeah. You can barely get it around your mouth. The balls deep, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it more like this. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'd say. Fucking a. Take the holy fucking. I'd open my mouth so wide, I'd still be able to talk fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot a lightning bolt down my tonsil holes any day, big man. Anyways, what were you going to say? Ah, fuck it. (laughs) Give myself a hand job. Does that count? (laughs) Yeah, no. Fucking right. This is me jacking off in the theater again. (laughs) (laughs) You're in the theater and you hear that you know Toddy Boy's in there. You're masturbating. I know you are, but what am I? (laughs) Uh... Oh, here we go. This is how I bathe. I was ripped and with some old guy watching me. Don't fuck look yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you get it. Your revenge is <sighs> dripping all over my Captain America, baby. Oh, I wish Captain America was dripping all over me. Oh, yeah. With Thor deep inside me. What? <laughs> oh, no. My thoughts Mjolnir. are... Mjolnir. <laughs> His giant hammer.
his Stormbringer, all those things. Um, I'm not going to take up too much of your time on this one because it's a long movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds like Dorm Mom You. Oh, my God. Whose yep. mom am I having sex with in the dorm? I don't know, man. Maybe Dorm Mom is. Uh... Your mommy's gonna be pissed. Fuck your mom. Oh, that's why he's destroying the earth. Fuck Dr. Your Strange mom, your fucked his mom in college. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> the, the MCU officially <laughs> makes perfect sense. Oh, uh, uh, It's true. Yeah. I think that's it. And then it's like, it's like, you know how she was feeling when I was done with her? She was Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Part three, he's going to fuck uh, Mantis, right? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, You're talking Groot. Everybody. Right? No, like Sweet. everybody. She's going to mind fuck them all. Yeah. All of them come to her. They circle her. They're like, you've been mind fucking us the whole time, so now we're going to fuck you. Oh, my God. In your mind. So it went from and they just all being brain banger. It went from like being a playful whatever to like a rape situation. <laughs> That's what I thought you were saying. No. She digs it, though. It's like one of those Japanese tentacle ones where she's like, no, no, <laughs> yes, no. You know? It's like that. Well, like, it wasn't on like purpose. a bunch of little snowflakes. It's all on purpose. George Lucas is a yeah. fucking pervert. Yeah, but you, you can see because she's all signed. You Verhoeven all the time talking about all the titties. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, Verhoeven's like, call me tonight, Lucas, yeah. and tell me about the alien titties. <laughs> He's like, stop it's, calling me. It's a weird conference call yeah, that's always going on. <laughs> Put the titties on the call. What? <laughs> so, so taboo on Naboo. Not any, ooh, taboo. <laughs> that's a new porn. Taboo on Naboo. Well, that definitely happened. It's a Star it. Wars spoof porn. That'd be fantastic. She, I think Leia should get doubled or tripled or quadrupled by Ewoks. This is what taboo on Naboo is. Every now and again, Luke and Leia meet on Naboo where their parents were wed. Yep. And they make love under the stars while <laughs> Han is off on some mission and nobody knows what's going on. Yeah. Good news. I got two hands, unlike any Skywalkers. Oh. <laughs> hi -oh. Hello. Wouldn't it be awful if you had two penises and only one hand? Oh, I would just like, I have a system already in place for that. Already? For, <laughs> <laughs> it, this may or may not be uh, connected to my grinder accounts, but I, I would just like one finger between, like it's like a W. You create and then you close it as best you can, and then just furiously. It's almost like a like, gang Aah. symbol. It is. It it's looks. You're jerking off a gang symbol. Yeah, it's like the number three with like an antenna on top, and that antenna is looking for buttholes. <laughs> 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 That's the best or worst thing I've ever said. You decide. <laughs> but I know what they're doing here, and what? What are they doing? They're covering her up. They're like, she don't have to dress the female superhero all sexy with the exposed skin. It's still pretty blah, blah, blah. sexy. Look at her fucking legs. I know. It's I can practically see her golden colored vag. <laughs> like, look at this thing. Like, you're talking about this thing. Like, holy fuck, look at the tits on her. They made her bigger titties. Because that's a fine line. It's a very Between fine. statutory and rape. Yes. Well, statutory rape is still rape. Oh, oh. Rock oh. So the judge was right. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's almost like he had a book to look this <laughs> sort of shit. What the fuck? <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah. This is uh, Todd Tebow, the Sailor Murray, and uh, just calling to say I'm not going to make it into work today. This is a sick line, right? Yeah, it must be. Well, I guess we're doing the best of here. Best of the best. Eric Roberts and uh, Sean Chris Penn and some good-looking Asian dudes. Three years on the air. I can't even be there. I'm going to tell you the truth, Miss Cast Universe. I've had raging hernia surgery. I'm in a real state over here. I, sorry. You know what? You know what? I said that I wasn't going to lie to you, so I won't. I will not lie to the miscast commentary universe. I was chemically castrated by the government. Because I am a bad man. Uh, I sort of look like now if you were to use a lighter and burn the nether regions of a Ken doll. So I'm calling in sick. But, you know, who needs a penis anyway? So that was Todd. He reached out to us. I decided to uh, call in and say a little hello. But you'll notice he got cut off there. But that will not stop Todd because here is a little bit more from him. Yeah, yeah, I got a complaint. Uh, the fucking tape just cut me off. 
Anyhow, what I was saying before is that this is the best of. I hope you enjoy it because I'm definitely enjoying my time at home now, you know, rage punching the air and screaming my father's name over and over again. But now that I don't have a penis, at least I can focus on things that matter, like crying. Um, it's been a real slice, let me tell you, like the like the slice in my goddamn nether region. Enjoy. Whatever, listen to Joe, listen to whatever he's going to tell you. Uh, oh, there's too many rings on here as well, by the way. It takes like 55 rings before you get to the goddamn answering machine tape. And there's not enough tape. Tebow, the sailor man, signing out, hanging out. All right. Thank you so much, Todd, for calling in. Uh, he, he jests, obviously. A, he doesn't know what chemical castration is. He thinks it makes you lose your penis. That's a whole other thing. But, uh, you know, he did have hernia surgery. That part was actually real. Uh, they found two hernias, and he is convalescing right now. And I tell you, man, the two of us got a couple of bum units. Between the two of us, we have been constantly taking turns being out, uh, but we have made sure to record ahead of time pretty far, so we haven't had any actual problems getting things on the air for you. So I'm pretty happy about that. Well, we might as well just keep this wagon train a moving. Uh, let's hear some more funny best of. I know I hate calling it funny. I think it's funny, but the fact that I say I think it's funny makes me sound really douchey. So I apologize for that, but just take a listen and decide whether or not you think it's funny. But if you're listening to it, you're listening to our best of, you probably thought it was funny anyways. So give it a listen. No, nighttime I, news. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. They're not good enough for the daytime. Daytime news has a minivan. Yeah. We can't see much from the <laughs> chopper up here. It's pretty dark. This is nighttime news. <laughs> it yeah. is exactly like a comic book movie come to life. Yeah. But a lot of people, a lot being you and somebody else I've spoke to, are not <laughs> digging the bio. And when you only know three yeah. people, that's the, like yeah. the majority of them. So Very, I'm like, if I push uh, further, I'm going to go Joe Cocker on this. <laughs> which, by, which is, by the way, what I should be called Joe Cocker for unrelated oh, reasons. Oh, yes. Because that rooster raped you? No, it's because when I become a dog in rap videos, I become a Cocker Spaniel. Oh, nice. Wonderful. What dog would you be? I think that I would be. Well, what do you think, man? Maybe I'd like to be a, you'd fr be a, a French fucking, bulldog. You'd be a fucking cat. <laughs> Sweet. You, you turn. We all turn into fat dogs. One, yeah. You disappear and then it pans down and then you're and then you're a cat. You're like, did I do good? <laughs> yeah, you did great. I love that. <laughs> We're gonna watch it the way you would have experienced it when you go into the theaters, yeah. and that's how and, it's and gonna... you would have experienced it with two assholes talking through the whole thing. Yes. The only person who can see the true scope of this is Galactus. He can see the end. Yes. That's it. So think about that, you fucking nerds. <laughs> nerds! <laughs> She's kind of in charge of him. She oh, knows She knows who's the boss in this house. Uh, <laughs> She's the Angela. Angela. We all know Angela was the fucking boss. And he is Tony, so we exactly. get that. Exactly. Oh, oh, my God. This <laughs> is so... so well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. This scene... They should have walked up to the army and it's yeah. like the Urukai. And they're like, yeah. sorry about they're like, sorry, that's one field over, bros. This is uh this is actually the battle for that, uh, yeah. Ice World. Uh, yeah, exactly. they're like, oh my mistake, sorry. Yeah. We have this field of battle <laughs> booked for Sunday. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Look at the shoulders on that Hugo weaving. Yeah. Well, that was a big thing. Shoulder pads were huge on men. Back then. And it transferred over to the 80s, mm -hmm. and then 2071, it'll be back for yeah. both. Yeah, exactly. It'll be a unisex look. Well, that's because that's what the look is in the future in Bill and Ted. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah, I swear. Oh, my God. Amazing. We're like, we're there. Our next movie is Iron Man 3. Oh, gross. We're going to watch it because that's what we're doing. <laughs> way, way to sell that next episode. I know, um, right? <laughs> It was like when they wheeled out um, Kirk Douglas at the oh, Oscars, God. and then like he tried to, he's like, <laughs> 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 then he just made a demonic sound. <laughs> You're like, oh well, God. Then maybe the only other one would be in uh, Civil War when uh, Tony Stark finds out exactly what happened to his parents. Yep. So, they but were killed outside of an old movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some clown. <laughs> I love it. Um, I also want to know how up? big they want our balls to be. Yes. Give me measurements. Uh, we're starting to age, so I can tell you how long they're going to be soon. <laughs> um, but 
<laughs> so stay tuned for that. That's going to be our new YouTube channel. I think we got some pretty big balls. Ball watch. Ball, yeah. well, you got ball talk. Miscast Miss, Miss commentary ball talk. <laughs> All right. Comes after cat talk? Yes. And, and we just comes after cats. cat chat. Yes. So, you know, check yeah. us out. And also go on the website for my dog blog. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I feel like that's a very small Venn diagram. Right. But... Like, you're not telling anybody anything new, and anybody <sighs> who's hearing it is like, who cares? Like, who cares? Yeah, shit. exactly. Right. It's like bit pretty much this podcast. I was just th- I was <laughs> going to say the same exact thing. High five. Yeah. 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 Mm. So, this is Linda Cardellini, who uh, she was in Freaks and Geeks and Legally Blonde. Is this Blonde. his girlfriend? Yeah, it's his wife, fucker. Well, who's his girlfriend? That Asian chick? He doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> we just <laughs> saw on the phone. He's like, hey, girlfriend, what's up? Uh... Unless he's like RuPaul. We're the, hey, girlfriend, you know, like... I, I genuinely like that. believe that you want me to kill myself, <laughs> like, in front of you. <laughs> that, I forgot about all this shit, man. Man, I totally yeah. forgot they're having this moment out in the woods, like the Ninja Turtles, when they got all fucked up. That's exactly they had to go to it, fucking, isn't it? <laughs> they had to go, oh, my God. Casey Jones to take care of them. That's... Raphael's in the tub. Okay, everybody, we are back. I got more info for you, more everything for you. Uh, looking over the year... Uh, we have looked at how much content we've put out in previous years. Uh, season one, we put out uh, 61 hours, 49 minutes, and 28 seconds worth of content. Uh, season two, 70 hours, 15 minutes, and 46 seconds. And this year, we trounced that number by a lot. Uh, of course, this has to do with all of the Marvel movies that we watched in a row, but we did 90 hours, 21 minutes, and 41 seconds of content in this season from our first post best of episode all the way up until the episode you heard before our outtakes episode. Uh, so that is crazy. It's that is three and three quarters days this season, total of more than nine and a half days worth of content. So, I mean, if you are into a sick meth binge, this is the show for you. It's like, it almost made me sick to my stomach. That's how much time I have skipped with my family, and I don't feel guilty enough, I don't think. Not for my age. Uh, That's all right. I'll make it up to them when I'm dead, because I'm, you know, well insured. In the meantime, though, we felt at the time that we were actually doing a pretty good job with our impressions this season. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to compile these impressions and we're going to see how it goes. So now we're going to let you be the judge. How do you like our impressions? Uh, tweet at us at Miscast Podcast or email us podcast at miscastcommentary.com. I would love to hear your opinions. Are these good impressions or are these bad? Listen now. Coming soon, a video cassette. <laughs> That's very good. It's me, George Takei. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> that was just... Oh yeah, Carl why, Malone, why... please marry us. Why is she... <laughs> Carl Malone? He's the biggest uh, fucking polygamous the... creep of them all. I'm the mailman, and I'm here to deliver another loving relationship. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Carl Malone. <laughs> and then, and then he's like, "Can somebody please pass me the rings?" And John Stockton hands it off. He's like, "Thanks for another <laughs> assist, John Stockton." <laughs> I love your. Carl Malone impression. <laughs> I think I fucking nailed it. To be, to be honest, I think I did a good one. This is my store. I yes. can go wherever I want. <laughs> I feel like he should have been played by like Jackie Mason or yes, something. Yes, that's like exactly that, what right? I think too. Yeah. Like just straight uh, out of the straight out of the jerk. What are you doing, you schmuck? Especially because this is like some Italian. You want to be the uh, vice president of Texas Oil? <laughs> you want to be? <laughs> it cost me $200 uh, a month, doctor. <laughs> I live in the gutter. That's pretty good, actually. I don't know. Todd, quick, we're live. I can't, I can't help it. Coming. I told you, I'm like internal. Something's happening within me. Oh my like God. the burps aren't coming out. Jesus Christ. The, the agreement, it's like just internal explosions. I'm just saying Ed McMahon never did this to And then stink, and then stink comes out. He did it all the time. He was loaded. <laughs> he was, yeah, that was, wow. but that was fine. That makes it pretty easy breezy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like, everybody was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nobody said anything there, You Ed. are correct, yes. sir. We're not even, we're on a commercial <laughs> break, Ed. Nobody said anything. Here's an envelope. You won $10,000. I don't think that's uh, yeah. true. This is, <laughs> this is dog poop in Kids a napkin. Kids say the darkest things. <laughs> yeah, like, so that's not even me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fucking Al Bundy, man. I'm talking Jeff Carlin. No, 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 uh, no, Kirby Kirby Sorry, I mean, uh, yeah. Kirby Enthusiasm. Sorry, I'm talking the Goldbergs. Oh, the Goldbergs, yeah. Great show. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, your podcast won't be so wonderful. It won't. Boom. Here we go. Boom. 
I know this guy. His name is Maury. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like, uh, I feel like that got that uh, Imperial <laughs> officer should be Harvey Firestein. <laughs> like that would be right on point We're for this. We're going to take down the rebels. <laughs> Then I gotta call my mother. You're never gonna make me join the dark side. <laughs> uh, like James Stewart oh, was a good actor. He was a great actor. I have no problems with him with any of his movies or anything like that. But it's very big. It's very. Oh, I I don't know. I mean, uh, my dog's not there anymore. Like it's just. How dare like, you? Speaking of God and doctors, remember in Malice when Doctor like, God, you think I have a God complex? I am God. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that uh, Alec Baldwin? Yeah. yeah. Hello there. <laughs> it's me, <laughs> Julian Lennon. It's me. I sound like my dad. On purpose. <laughs> if you ever want to hear Arnold Schwarzenegger do a commentary on one of his movies, this is the one because he literally is just, it's, it's described video. It's not even a commentary. He's giving you no insight into what was going on or anything like that. He's like, this is the scene where I'm running from Michael Ironside and all these thugs, and they think I'm a spy, but I don't think I'm a spy. I was just at recall, <laughs> and I don't know what's going on. Oh, now this is the scene where I'm the girl with the head, but you don't know I'm the girl with the head yet. You just think I'm you so just he think essentially just girl. describes the scene you're watching. Yeah, and but like... He's a funny story what happened yeah. on the set how much more would you <clears> like <throat> this movie if Jay Leno was playing that role hey we said we were supposed to do uh, yeah. their duck guy <laughs> instead he'd be like a librarian let's go look in the news what's in the headlines yeah, today the headlines are duck, oh. duck flies well, that's weird I was just, seen a duck flying huh I was <laughs> just humiliated by my Jay Leno and I'm so happy that you did yours that was good I'll be and, and you banks <laughs> <laughs> that one that guy looked like Glenn Danzig <laughs> That was going dancing. Mother. <laughs> just before he died, just before he took a club to the head. Tell your Orkai not to walk this way. <laughs> oh my God. Is that yeah. Louis Armstrong? <laughs> Louis or Louis, Louis Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> Louis Armstrong. Louis, Louis, Louis. Uh, see trees of green. <laughs> <laughs> that is him. There uh, he is. Todd Tebow the Sailor Murray here. Phoning it in tonight. Literally. Oh, they just don't make live podcasts like they used to, baby. You got miscast commentary. Universe, you got the best of. You got Dinkless T. You got the summer shoulder, baby. Best of the best. Best of the rest. At rest with my test tickles, which are now gone. Oh, just looking out the window, seeing all the people outside enjoying their genitals. What a fucking summer. <laughs> and Todd has chimed back in for us wonderfully. He <laughs> he's getting closer to the whole chemical castration thing. He at least knows that it's more related to the balls. Uh so that's pretty good. I am a big fan of Dinkless Tea in the Summer Shoulder though. Let's get I think we're going to have to get a t-shirt out for that bad boy. Uh, <laughs> all right gang, let's take another listen to another compilation of wonderful clips. Uh, I was just going to try and do an impression of Casey Kasem. Let me, let me try. And we have a letter from Todd. I cannot do it. Just forget it. Forget it. I don't know. In my head, I felt like I have had the ability to do it. And then I just heard it because I'm wearing headphones and forget it. Forget it. I apologize to Casey Kasem. I, I apologize to Robin from the Super Friends cartoon. I apologize to Shaggy. Yeah, it's Casey Kasem. He's all those people. Didn't you not know? Anyways, um, have a listen to some non-impressions with this compilation. That guy looks like a character from a British movie about magic. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> Holy fuck. He totally does, though. You're <laughs> right. He looks like a cool guy. Energy never dies. What energy it dies, doesn't it? Never. Oh, okay, sweet. You Good. remember the Black Eyed Peas CD. Goodness. Oh, I just don't funk with people's hearts. That's all I learned. <laughs> 2015, man. We're getting yeah. there. We're almost in the present, Holy, guys. Holy, they don't make them like... Oh, no, wait. Yes, they do. They, do. they uh, currently make yeah, them like this. They are. So the Time Traveler's daughter. Oh, gross. The Time Traveler's wife, too? Oh, like, the, re on. the revenge. Yeah. Sorry. This time like, it's... <laughs> yeah. This time it was personal. <laughs> yeah. uh, see? Time uh, I like that. Yeah, oh, yeah, so. everybody gets their own relic. Yeah. What do you think well, yours would be? Oh, man. He's got a big whippy thing. He gets the sweet coat. I don't know. I think it would be a bench. 
a bed, <laughs> just something to, oh, I popped it out yeah, here. Yeah, there just, it some, just a place to rest. Like, bleh, you know, like, like around Dark around Phoenix and all those, cri- yeah, yeah, oh, you would say. Scarlet like, Witch and. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're all essentially limitless. So we'll create limits for them and then listen to the nerds complain. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? We're having a good time. Are we having a good time out there, folks? <laughs> in fairness this thing is new to me and i thought that was the that was the that applause was the perfect one <laughs> there's a there's a little half naked blue boy running around <laughs> who's brian singer directing oh, this <laughs> <laughs> yes probably two Four hours or something I was, I was gonna say probably two because so much of his face is covered it's probably much larger pieces it's probably only small pieces are only like around his like like nose and nose mouth and, and eyes. Yeah. yeah, I'm pointing at it. Thank you very much for actually <laughs> like verbalizing it the way that you're supposed to. Yeah, you don't know how to you don't fuck around with this guy. He's a goonie. He knows how to find treasure. <laughs> He's a goonie. <laughs> Episode four. <clears throat> what is the Roman numeral? Let's see. Six. Six. Uh, oh my god. But also That was terrible. It's because Rocky didn't go to six. I know, like so what the hell? The I've never been to Rome. <laughs> Fuck, man. Chewbacca's clean in this one. He's just a little shaggy. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> see? Shaggy. <laughs> you see what they did? <laughs> Hello. Oh, Ooh, that that's a big old so tree. Horrible. See, that's what's Where really cool. Where did you see cool. this was California? Yeah, this is the California Redwood Forest. Yeah, they're not there anymore. So No, they're still there. Some one, there's one. Most of it's burnt down, and then yeah. some of it was torn down to build the Big Brother house. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the rest of it's that. <laughs> You know how you keep all these fucking names in check? Holy shit. It's, I don't know. It's just... Bam uh, Margera and whoever the fuck it's, else. It's all about just organizing your thoughts. And I've I created a proper Take away folder. the crap, like family names, events that have happened. Could not, could yeah, not like, care less. See ya, dump. I have I, I have my son's health card on me. If I need his name, I know where to get it. Like it's, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> He's choreographing a fight for a sword. Are you trying when to say that word as many swords. times as possible? Yeah. Yeah. Choreographing? Yeah. Choreographing. Corey Haim? <laughs> Corey Haim. Cor- <laughs> the two Coreys. <laughs> the two Coreys. Corey Haim and choreography. <laughs> Forget it. We are always a collective. Like the Borg. The show doesn't exist without both of us. <gasps> so it doesn't matter. Anything else doesn't matter. The Chicken or the egg, yo. That being, that being said, I'll happily replace you if you get my fucking way. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Part of, I, I coined a new term, the MCCU. Yeah. Miscast Commentary Cinematic Universe. Oh, so there. yeah. Oh, you threw another C in there and stole it from me. Yep. Yeah, I like that, though. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you fucking nailed it. <laughs> Some lives were definitely ruined because this movie exists. Lives were ruined? It's yes. just a movie. No, but when people put a lot of eggs on uh, no cone pun intended <laughs> in this Woo-hoo! past <laughs> okay <laughs> new, new game as many puns as you can work in we're so doing great. it but here's the important thing if a duck dates a human woman who pays the bill oh, oh, that was the best one of the night I thought about that one way long ago but I didn't know what I like I, I, I had that who pays the bill but I'm like I don't know what to attach it to so I'm glad you did. There you go. I, I, I'm glad you did. I, I was I was biting Proud my time. You. Thank you. This episode brought to you by the Circle K. A one stop <laughs> in the hell. Joe, Joe, come over here. What the, the hell? What the hell is that? Just landed. What the? That's a. Hit. Who's? Those are the best looking two dudes I've ever seen in my life. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Joe. Hey guys. Hey. Hey Todd. Todd? What in, what the, in the hell? Joe, you're looking great. You're looking pretty great too yourself, buddy. What's going on? Uh, yeah, what's what's going on? Look, guys, you can't have a sponsor today. What are you, you trying to... Well, we have to have a sponsor. Shut the fuck up, Todd, and listen to Joe. If I got to tell you one more time, Todd, you're getting a fucking beating. Sorry, Joe, continue. Yeah, Joe, continue. Hey, weird that you're on my side on this. You know what? Todd's really been fucking bugging me today. Yeah, he's been bugging me too. Hey, Todd. What the fuck, Joe? Todd? Oh, God. What? Fuck, Todd, Joe? <laughs> Todd, Joe? <laughs> Anyways, we've, we've had our fun. Now, <laughs> if you guys have a sponsor for this episode, you guys are going to die. You have to stop it before what? that happens. No, seriously, Joe and Todd. If you say a sponsor on this episode, the 
very fabric of space and time will suck into itself like some kind of dirty old black hole belly button. Yeah, but I mean, we got like we, a, we got to get that money, right? Yeah, that sounds like a bunch of fucking bullshit to me. Yeah. Why, why this time? Why now? Well, you guys, you you just don't understand. No, you don't understand. Obviously, like this is exactly the kind of bullshit that you would pull, Joe. Yeah, that's no yeah. the kind of bullshit. He's a liar. I, He's a liar. I, I am not a liar. He is not, not a liar. You, I'm him. not a liar. You're you're the fucking stop liar, calling dude. Joe a liar, Todd. Fuck you, Todd. Fuck. Jesus Christ, if you weren't so good looking, I'd fucking slap the taste out of your mouth. Hey, Joe, look at this. What? Okay, Joe, go stand over by the other Joe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to close my eyes and spin around. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, God. Which Joe? Oh, you're making out with each other. Jesus Christ. It's my ultimate dream. Not only I do. <laughs> Strangely enough, it's mine, too. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> and that is the script for Bill and Ted 3. <laughs> All right, and we are back again. Uh, some more stats for you, some interesting stuff. Of all the movies we did this year, this is obviously the season with the most movies that we did. We did a total of 35 movies, one TV special, so 36 things total. Just looking at some of the financials behind it, uh, the highest budget movies we had uh, number five was actually a four-way tie between four Marvel movies. I'm going to just let you in on this right now. It's all, all Marvel movies. Um, but uh, four Marvel movies had a $200 million budget. They were Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and Black Panther. Uh, the first Avengers movie comes in number four at $220 million budget. Avengers Age of Ultron was a $250 million budget, as was Captain America Civil War. And our number one... Avengers Infinity War. We are going to get to the other Marvel movies. We're just letting a few compile right now. I think probably the beginning of next year we'll do whatever ones are out. So we've got, what, uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, we'll have Endgame. We'll have... We'll, we'll, have, a, we'll have a hunk. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll get to those. But uh, we just wanted to have a few in a row to do so then we weren't just throwing out a new one every single time like another one came out on Blu-ray. Now let's talk about low-budget movies. So of the five lowest-budget movies we had this year, none of them were Marvel. Uh, the fifth lowest budget we had was the 1990 remake of Night of the Living Dead. That was a $4.2 million budget. Uh, yes, we keep in mind we're not, we're not accounting for inflation and all that sort of thing. We're just, who has the time, right? I'm going to go talk to friggin' the money matters guy or whatever. And he's going to tell me all sorts of shit. And he's going to tell me, buy, sell, blah, blah, blah. I don't know any of that. A Christmas story was number four. It had a $3.3 million budget. Uh, Halloween two, our Halloween special was, so our Christmas and Halloween specials were both uh, in this list, but uh, Halloween two was a $2.5 million budget. The breakfast club, $1 million budget. That's crazy. Well, not crazy, I guess, because, Really, it's like one scene. It's one scene, and a bunch of people who weren't quite big at that time. You know, somehow though, I think if you got the exact same actors to be in the movie today, you could probably get it done for three quarters of that amount of money. And our lowest budget movie of the year, Sam Raimi's Evil Dead, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And I know what you're thinking: Where did that money go? I think it was 90% blood. Just they shot their literally shot their wad on blood and then shot more blood on that wad. So that's that's how you budget things, I guess. There's probably one other person out there who's like a real stat nerd is like, yeah, you did it. And then now the people going, get to the next clips already. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to get to the next clips and we're going to go from overthinking things to dramatically underthinking things uh you hear me and my frustration when todd mispronounces things so here is a little quick clip package of when he does that you know okay this is funny that we say this right now yeah. would we have a problem if they drew ralph al ghul's daughter naked in that batman thing Raz al ghul that's what i just fucking said i disagree <laughs> <laughs> that's why i drink just equios just equios oh my god oh, like, wait, say, say his name again Benedict Cumberbatch? I think that's wrong. No. I think you're correct. I think it's Bach. Is it Cumberbatch? It is Benedict Cumberbatch. 
Did he between say this you and to me, you? between you and me, which one do you think is pronouncing it correctly? <laughs> I think this time it's me. No, it's never been Cumberbatch. It's Cumberbatch. Like yes. Oh, I've lost all respect for this man. Okay, we're back, and I'm going to throw to this next thing really quick. You may have heard us mention earlier in the season that we had had a fire alarm during one of our episodes. Uh, there, we do interrupt it during. Uh, during the show, uh, we paused it and brought it back and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we wanted to just let take you through the alarm itself and uh, hear what what occurred uh, while we were off the air. I know technically this could have been in the outtakes or whatever, but here we are. Um, so yeah, this is just just a little bit of silliness that occurred uh, interrupting one of our shows. As we always say, we try to do the shows in one take. We 99.99% of the time succeed. This one time, uh, we had to stop things. Uh, God, I've even had, you know, had to go take a power poop, and we kept the show going. So, yeah, let's have a listen to this uh, weird, crazy moment from the year. I like that they're all just vaguely controlling things to keep it moving straight. Like, everybody's just, like, kind of the way, like, really bad actors who are, like, being, tr like, towed in cars are just, like, turning the wheel like friggin' maniacs, like, which would, like... Oh, like, when they're filming, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, they're, like... Yeah, they're just moving those arms around. Oh. The planet, they're going to junk planet. <laughs> We've got a fire alarm here, folks. Uh, we're going to oh, do I something... Oh, that was the movie no. for a second. It's the... It's, God damn it, the building's on fire again. We're going to do something uh, rare here, and we're going to pause... It's 45 minutes and 10 seconds. Son of a bitch. I'll go check this out. Oh, man. We're dragging the whole table. We're going outside. People are having a field day. <laughs> well, I really hope the building's not on fire. I could really, you know, go for not uh, being in a towering inferno. Yeah. Okay, while the Joe fights this building fire, I'm going to read the back synopsis for Skyscrapers starring The Rock. I'm going to go with you. I'm not going to let him die alone, damn it. <laughs> yes, I am. I just said that I'm going to push him into the flames and run the other way. This show's mine, baby. All mine. Yeah, that did have the feeling that it was part of the movie, though. Like, it took a couple, yeah, a couple of moments for me. Like, hey, that's not right. <sighs> ah. And we are back. Oh, Lordy. Well, a lot of firsts here. All right, we are back, and we talked a little bit about uh, budget earlier in the episode. Now let's talk a little bit about profit. Now we do profit by percentage. We're not going to say, okay, because it's obvious, like certain ones, you know, Avengers, uh, Infinity War, Black Panther. Oh, Black Panther is actually the highest grossing of any of the ones we have here. This is all based on just domestic, too, by the way. We don't have the worldwide stats for all of these because it's a little harder to track accurately anyways. So uh, these are all domestic numbers. Um, but yeah, Black Panther was the highest grossing. But we don't want to do that that's not profit right because it also costs a jillion dollars so what we want to do is how much more did the money make than its budget or how much less did it make than its budget so that's how we're doing this it's how we've done it every other year i don't really know why i'm over explaining it but i maybe just to make me feel better i don't know but um so our lowest profit movies our top five uh one is actually a marvel movie thor made 120.69% of its budget. So, I mean, it made a profit. And again, once you added the worldwide, it pro it went crazy. But as far as this one is concerned, uh, it only made a little bit of money. Uh, Transformers, the movie, the animated movie that uh, from the 80s, you got the touch, you got the power. It was actually a $6 million budget and did not make a ton more than that. It only made... Uh, six point four six nine million dollars. I know I have really specific numbers here, uh, but uh, yeah, that only puts it at one hundred and seven point eight two percent profit. So yeah, it's a very small margin. I mean, if they gave away stickers at the theater, they that's the money gone pretty much. Um, kind of a surprising one in number three, Gremlins two, did not make its budget back domestically. It only made 82.96% total of its budget. 
But when I looked it up, this is still crazy to me. I don't know how this these were numbers are real. But apparently this movie had a $50 million budget, which for the time, I mean, it was 1990. It's a lot. That is a lot. And I say that, and then right next to it, I see that Die Hard 2, also 1990, had a $70 million budget. That's like a $5 billion budget today. It's like if you made all the Marvel movies back to back. Uh, it's nuts. But uh, if you... Yeah, if you look at that, though, it had a $50 million budget and it only made $41.48 million. So, not great, guys. Sorry. Not a surprise on this list. Another technically Marvel movie, Howard the Duck, only made 44.04% of its money. So that's based on a $37 million budget and only making $16.29 million back. So, ouch to them. And then our lowest profit of all of them, which was very surprising to me, was Digstown actually the first movie of this uh season and it was a budget of 17 million dollars and only made 4.83 million dollars uh so 28.45 percent of its budget ouch you know what i mean but then on the other side we look at the high profit ones and these ones again a lot of big well a couple not big surprises then a a pretty big surprise in here. A Christmas Story is number five, made 624.4% of off of its budget. So yeah, that's $3.3 million translated into $20.6 million. So I guess, you know, you throw the word Christmas in, you put it around Christmas time, it's going to be like that. Uh, our lowest budget movie is next on the list. Uh, Evil Dead made 685.7%, which... Not a ton of money when you actually look at it and do the math. Um, it was only it only made two point four million dollars in the theater, but when it only cost three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, that's just all profit, baby. That's money in the pocket to shoot more blood on more wads. Uh, Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. Nobody says Episode Six for like nobody says that. I think only younger people say that, like people who grew into Star Wars from like the prequels, and then you're like, oh, this is a big deal. It's Jedi. Return of the Jedi, baby. Uh, it's It made 951.71%. It is our number three movie. Yeah, it was $32.5 million. It made $309.3 million in profit. Again, if you were to adjust for inflation and all that sort of thing, I believe it would be the most profitable movie of all of them. It would also be the highest box office by quite some amount. But uh, we're not doing that. We're not playing that game. You can't make me inflate. My lungs are weak from over-speaking. Halloween 2 was our number two. It was a $2.5 million movie. It made $25.53 million. 1,021.35% uh, profit. See, and that's with John Carpenter, like, just flat out phoning it in. So imagine what would have happened if he would have, like, put in some serious effort and not, like, day drink all the time during the entire, you know, pre-production and production of the movie. Probably could have nailed it. I enjoyed the movie, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying it probably could have been, like, next level. And then our number one crazy high number here. The Breakfast Club, from $1 million to $45.87 million. It's a 4,587.52% 4, jump. That is gigantic. So yeah, it's it's funny to see what movies do particularly well and what movies don't, but like that's, you know, what we say. I'm looking at all the, uh, like all the Marvel movies. They all made good profit. Uh, and again, they all made way more than this when you add in the worldwide and stuff like that too but none of them you know they all cost so much money so it's you know i give you just a quick example like an age of ultron it cost 250 million dollars it made 459 million that's only 183 percent doesn't make the list this is why this is why these percentages matter so much so yeah with all that in mind uh we try not to avoid any topics uh, for any particular reason. We try not to offend either. There's a fine line to surf uh, when you're doing this kind of thing. Uh, so we do get into topics like race, for example, and uh, I feel like we deal with it lightly. And we've talked about that in the past and how, you know, the things we say are in jest and all that sort of stuff. But uh, here's just a quick listen just to remind you that we mean you no harm. Yeah, I feel like this like combination of movies should have made ooh, uh, John ooh. McClane really racist. It's like every time I'm around black people, everything goes to shit. <laughs> He's like, so the, the <laughs> oh, it's true. Part three, he moves. Yeah. Part three, he moves to Boston, and he's like, "We're gonna be fine." 
And then he's like, oh, no, the Utah Jazz is in town. The Utah Jazz. And then and shit just, goes down. And the one black guy who's on Utah Jazz comes up. He's like, oh, my God, I heard about you from Nakatomi. <laughs> and then everything goes crazy. He's like, it's happening again. Shit goes nuts. But uh, you're, you're probably going to see us plant pretty firmly in the 80s for a little while. Good. Uh, we get got, back to where, yeah. where life was simple. You got it. And the so. stereotypes ran clean and fierce. <laughs> Yeah, a movie like this had no place in the world. I know, because, like, what the hell? Because they weren't, like, if, if this movie was made in the 80s, everybody would have had a boombox on their shoulder. <laughs> it would have been awesome. Hey, my man, what it look like? <laughs> Jesus, that was a movie. Remember that? All right, guys, this is the end of it for us. Uh, we're going to play you out on one last package here. But I just wanted to say once again, thank you all so much for making this year our greatest year. Uh, we got into the whole t-shirt thing and you guys really jumped on that. Our Happy Life Day shirt has been a really popular seller and we're really happy about that. A lot of ways to support the show right now. Uh, we are, we have the Tee Public store, uh, tpublic.com slash miscast dash commentary. Uh, you can actually donate just via PayPal on our website, miscastcommentary.com. Uh, you can also join our Patreon. It hasn't officially launched yet. We haven't gotten the episodes going. Uh, official dates for all that are coming very soon. As we've said before, we are doing commentaries for all of the Game of Thrones episodes. And once that is done, I mean, that's over a year worth of shows. But uh, once that is done, you will be able to help us pick the next one. So we are looking forward to that. And you can also count in some other bonuses with that Patreon as well. So we hope you guys check that out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we've been really enjoying it. It is literally Todd's first time ever seeing Game of Thrones. So it's a lot of fun to kind of experience him reacting to it at the same time as us giving commentary and the trivia. It's all the same stuff you get from the show, except now you're getting it in smaller TV formats instead of larger movie formats. But it feels just as big. I mean, our budget feels out of this world. We've got new microphones, guys. And now, quite frankly, we need help paying for them because I may have overreached a little. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. I uh, Visit us at our website, miscastcommentary.com. Email us, podcast at miscastcommentary.com. Call us, just like our friend Man Crush did from Dueling Decades and Todd did today because he forgot my phone number, I guess. Uh, one two eight nine. 769-3288. You can call or text that number anytime. You will get our voicemail. Apparently, it's a lot of rings right now. I am trying to get that sorted out, but it's a virtual thing, and it's it's been more trouble than it's worth as far as that's concerned. But if you do want to get through, just let it keep ringing. Let it keep ringing. I promise that you will get through to us, and we would love to hear from you. And we might play your stuff on the air as long as you're not putting out. I don't even care if you're trash talking us. We'll we'll play that still. But I just don't want to hear like you know hate speech or any non nonsense like that or anything that's you know you know what's appropriate right come on you read twitter and then like you get that like a hard knot in your stomach that hard knot is you knowing what to do and what not to do so just apply that to the phone and everything will be fine uh follow us on twitter at miscast podcast i'm at jk finley todd's at miscast todd you can find us on instagram at miscast commentary todd posts to that one he doesn't have his own instagram so he just posts directly to that one and i am at jk finley on that as well you know follow us on tumblr we've got a tumblr blog going uh follow us on like our page on facebook a million ways to get in touch with us and uh, keep an eye out for all of my appearances i put them in my bio page on the website you can see everywhere uh, that i appear on other podcasts and stuff like that i've got another episode coming up uh in a matter of days in fact with uh dueling decades people again so i'm looking forward to that and i've done some other uh, really interesting podcasts as of late so uh yeah check all that stuff out and just the fondest thank you thank you darnell thank you tristina thank you grafrau you know you're all out there somewhere you've never revealed yourselves to us and i assume it's because you're the same kind of anxiety ridden introverts that we we all are really in fact but you know if you're you know if you're one of our regular listeners we'd love to hear from you so uh reach out and uh yeah we we want to interact we uh enjoy you guys a lot and we know you're out there and that makes us very happy uh so thank you for all that and now as always thanks to everyone thanks to uh, Nate Hindle again who made our theme that we love so much and 
uh, allows us to use the music when I do other things over top of it, like when we did our Marvel thing. Really, really appreciate that. And to my wife and my kids who get banished from our living room quite often so we can do these recordings. Always appreciate that. And to Todd, who I would thank if he was here. Uh, he didn't show up, so maybe I should just avoid thanking him altogether, but I can't. It is, you know, everybody knows the story by now that we spent a lot of years apart, and then this kind of brought us back together. Not that it was a falling out or anything like that. We can make something like that up for a future episode, but that didn't happen. Uh, we just, you know, life got in the way, and this brought it back and we couldn't be happier to have such a cool excuse to uh, make sure we're spending time together and spending time with all of you. So with that, I thank you. I wish you all the best. Stay tuned for next week's episode when we announce the beginning of season four and we'll talk about all the things. There's so much to talk about too. There's so many things I want to bring up. The Matrix and Spider-Man the Sony Spider-Man Marvel madness and uh, so much, but I don't want to do it without Todd. So it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week for that. And we play you off with just one last compilation of our clips. Bye guys. Like teenagers just assume. And I mean, yes, there's anxiety and, and all these other things that tack onto it and exacerbate it. But like everybody is thinking that every single move is being guides like creates watched, and like, creates your path and it's right, like, like if ripples. i do this it could take me off in a place where i don't want right. to be and it's like it's funny too because after now it's like nobody did anybody really care nobody cared not really like maybe somebody would make a comment but now do you think they're really like thinking if, about it now yeah. years later nobody give a fuck i do sometimes but it's well, like we I, do because, i flash yeah yeah, yeah exactly I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm living a nightmare so don't <laughs> <laughs> don't do don't do what i do i Put still in a neighborhood flash i still remember forwards the, backwards yeah. sideways like I, like I could if i could draw i could actually draw scenes of things that happened in high school that like i that still like haunt me even though they were nothing and i know they that. were nothing we should do that that should be a thing we do i just stress stick pictures we'll just draw i got a bunch of crayons yeah. and it'll be like a like a therapy thing you know they'll be like oh this is what happened show in me high school a, show me on the doll where nobody touched you in high school I <laughs> <laughs> buddy that guy from Conan should have just slept with the president as well yeah. and then you know yeah that would have been he fantastic. was jealous so he jealous. wished he had a little trunk tube up in him she. oh it's a girl yes Laurie Kilmartin that's a guy's name not very sure I see I mean I know oh, yeah. like five Lorries all, right. all women <laughs> uh, th <laughs> <laughs> I like that very much. You can see three Corsair ships. You see a fire in the background, some hills, some Corsair water. Corsair ships, Jesus. This is a Corsair ship. What's the name of the trees there? Like, for fuck's sake, holy uh, fuck. That one is <laughs> Selvin. <laughs> and then the other ones are all got, like, normal names, and they make right. fun of Selvin for being named by hippies. Aww. All right, tree huggers. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Fuck. Dendrophilia. How am I not the fucking richest human being in the world for, like, most creative... <laughs> Do you hear what I just said? Do you hear what I just said? I said tree huggers. should be coming in any day now. Hey, everybody. How we doing? Welcome to Miscast Commentary. I'm Joe Findlay. I'm Todd Tebow, the Sailor Murray. And I know we promised you we weren't going to do Marvel for a while, and we broke that promise immediately. <laughs> Promises were made to be broken. God damn it. Um, ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, don't even know what that means. Um, but we are here with you. We're doing some... Oh, <laughs> we're doing something. No, nope, right. stop everything, because this isn't the Marvel movie. We we were talking about Howard the Duck earlier, and I started thinking about. That. Yeah, I know. It's like I thought you were going somewhere with it. All right, we're gonna stop. Fuck you guys, let's go. Fuck him. Let's let's do it. Hey, everybody, welcome to Miss <laughs> Guest Commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joe Finley. <laughs> just, I already said it. Just tell, just tell them who you are. I'm Todd. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the Sailor Man. <laughs> We're so, you're like trapped in Marvel and you're like trapped in a time bubble. I have, I forgot. I was like farting around through my PlayStation, whatever account. I don't even know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I real I remembered way back in the day because I couldn't find my, it's my handle on there is Fudge Dreams 69. <laughs> Phil Demers, by the way, reach out to us. We still want to interview you. He's a local guy who was the whistleblower from Marineland. And I want to talk to him so fucking That would be awesome. The only problem was I legitimately reached out to him. 
offering to interview him on our show thinking hey we'll give him a spot to have his voice only to find out he's been on like joe rogan's Everything. podcast like joe rogan's podcast is one of the biggest things on the planet no, 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 i'm no, like no. oh okay, okay wait, gets wait, smaller wait, so than- he's done some light tv yeah maybe you know something that, that joe rogan what's his i don't yeah. never heard of him before yeah. he's done a lot of low-end stuff why don't you come with the big boys uh, why don't see? you swim with the big sharks dog oh well done yeah Oh, uh, see, this is why I need you because yeah. I do not have the, uh, I do not have the self confidence to be our booker, <laughs> and like, <laughs> so all I ever do is reach out to people and go, "Hey, you think maybe you want to come and talk to us for a couple of minutes?" You talk to, I would call him out of yo. You talk yeah. to your agent. Yeah. You got some real big on the pipeline here. You want to be something. You want to be fucking nothing. <laughs> We part of the MCU. He's yeah. like, whoa, of course. And then he finds out it's miscast commentary universe. Yeah. Um, Music supervisor, LL Cool J. Well, who the fuck else would it have been? Yes. Shock mm-hmm. him. Could have been Mo Henry. He could have been uh, promoted from negative cutter. Mm. I know. The positive two, cutter. The <laughs> 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 I <I'm> love <laughs> life. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you were going the, the same. You were going the, down the same thing that I was. I wanted to go down. No, it was. It's. It's been a lot of fun. It's given us a great excuse to like be together as much as possible. That's. That's all and it really is. Yeah. Exactly. I. I actually have really bad news. I've never released an episode of this. <laughs> it's I don't. All, it's I, all a show. I don't know how. <laughs> that would be me. Yeah. If I was, this, this would be the revelation. To the season three yeah. shock twist. Yeah. This has been Miscast Commentary with your hosts, Joe Finley and Todd Murray. Executive producer, Joe Finley. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. Visit www.miscastcommentary.com for all news related to the podcast. Miscast Commentary is a Miscast Media Production.